Croeso y Conwy. Welcome to Conwy, one of the most beautiful and most historically enthralling towns in all of Wales. Dominated by a truly spectacular medieval castle, Conwy is filled to the brim with captivating landmarks and dazzling sights. And on this walk around the town, we'll explore everything from the town's fetching harbour to its astonishingly intact circuit of defensive walls. While we'll also pass by what's reputed to be one of the oldest houses in Wales, and even get a glimpse of the smallest house in all of Great Britain. All of that is to come as we make our way around the heart of Conwy on a beautiful summer's evening. But we begin our walk looking up at the town's most iconic landmark, the immense Conwy Castle. A breathtaking fortress that towers over the rest of Conwy, this medieval castle is more than 700 years old, and it was built between 1283 and 1287 under the orders of the English King Edward I, who constructed it and a number of other major castles as a show of his power over Wales, which he and his armies had conquered in the preceding years. It was with the construction of the castle that the town of Conwy was first established, and along with the fortress, a ring of mighty defensive walls were built, surrounding a small civilian settlement that we'll find just on the other side of these great fortifications. Here we find ourselves on the south side of the town, just outside the walls, this beautiful walkway providing the best place to get up close and personal, with just a few of the 21 imposing towers that line the famous defences. The walls as we see them today stand almost entirely in the same form as they did when they were first built more than seven centuries ago making Conwy one of the best-preserved walled medieval towns in all of Europe. But as we stroll alongside these imposing stone walls, it makes you wonder exactly why Edward I chose this location in Wales to build one of his largest and most famous castles of all. Well, we can point to two main reasons, one strategic and one political. Firstly, as we can see from this map, the modern town of Conwy occupies a prominent position on the north coast of Wales, situated on the east bank of the wide river Conwy as it flows out into the Irish Sea. But before the English king's late 13th century conquest, Conwy was situated in a region of Wales known as Gwynedd, ruled by native Welsh princes, and which was one of the last bastions of independent Welsh culture in the nation much of South Wales having already been conquered by the Normans more than a century beforehand. However, as we now make our way into the walled town via the large mill gate here, which was once upon a time the site of a large drawbridge, when Edward and his English armies finally took control of Gwynedd and forced out the native Welsh princes, they sought to suppress all facets of Welsh heritage and the decision to build Conwy Castle in this location was one of the most brutal in that vein. Before the castle that exists today, this site close to the mouth of the River Conwy was home to one of the most religiously significant abbeys in North Wales, Abba Conwy Abbey, which was founded by none other than Llewellyn the Great, the ruler of Gwynedd and later Prince of the Welsh. Llewellyn was one of the most important figures in Welsh history, and after his death in the year 1240, he was buried at Aberconwy Abbey here, while his successor and the first Prince of Wales, David Ab Llewellyn, was also buried at the Abbey. Later on in our walk, we'll find a statue dedicated to Llewellyn the Great. But for the English King Edward, his resting place was a symbol of Welsh independence that needed suppressing. So he built Conwy Castle on top of that site, and forced the monks of Aberconwy Abbey to move away further inland to Mynan Abbey, near the town of Llandrust. But here in a secluded corner of the walled town of Conwy, we find one of the last traces of the religious community that existed here before the English conquest, the medieval St Mary's Church, which is the oldest building within Conwy's walls. Construction on this historic place of worship began more than 800 years ago in the late 12th century, 
and it initially served as the Abbey Church of Aberconwy Abbey, where monks would go to pray. As an abbey founded by a young Llewellyn the Great, Aberconwy Abbey was one of Gwynedd's wealthiest and most significant monasteries of all, and the church here was the building at its very heart. It was likely here that Llewellyn was originally buried, and it's also reputed that it was inside this church that monks wrote the Llyfr Aneirin, the Book of Aneirin, which is one of the oldest Welsh language books surviving today. Since that time, St Mary's Church has changed somewhat, the prominent tower, for example, being a later addition to the building of the 14th and 15th centuries. Although some original stonework from the church's 12th century construction does remain in places, particularly along its east and west walls. When Edward I took over in the late 13th century and built Conwy Castle, the vast majority of the old abbey was done away with, but this church remained in place. With the monks having moved away, however, it was converted for use as the local parish church for the new town of Conwy which after the foundation of the castle and the construction of the walls, became home to an English military garrison of soldiers. And over the last 700 years, this church has stood at the heart of the walled town. Although over time, Conwy has gradually grown in size enough to expand beyond its walls. However, as we make our way out of the tranquil churchyard of St Mary's, it's the interior of the walled town which bears the most fascinating stories and sights on offer in Conway, with a network of narrow streets lined by historic houses, religious buildings and more crammed inside an extremely small area. Despite the almost perfectly preserved walls and castle, however, the heart of the town is home to a wider range of historic buildings, Everything from medieval landmarks to more recent edifices, like this eye-catching Victorian-era Baptist church, built in 1875. Of course, in the immediate aftermath of the English conquest of Wales, a number of Welsh rebellions led Conwy here to being a fiercely guarded town. But over the centuries, the threat of conflict gradually declined, and in the modern day, Conwy has since become one of the most delightful and most popular places to visit for tourists in Wales. Here we're passing by the town's modern visitor centre, home to a lovely little gift shop and exhibitions detailing the town's centuries of history, making it a great place to stop off at when you're in the town. And speaking of places to stop in Conwy, across the road here we see the beautiful Erskine Arms, a grand pub originally built in the 1830s or 1840s, and which for a long time has served as one of the town's most popular places to stop and get a drink, or even stay overnight. Once also known as the Malt Loaf, the pub stands overlooking Rosehill Street here which for many decades in the 19th and 20th centuries was actually part of the main road across the top of North Wales, before the building of the Conwy Tunnel that today sees most traffic bypass the centre of the walled town here. The historic presence of so much passing trade is one of the reasons that you'll find a large number of pubs and shops lining this and a few other streets in the heart of Conwy. But just here we find a pleasant open space in the midst of the densely packed town centre, Lancaster Square, on which there stands a statue of none other than Llewellyn the Great. We know that this heroic figure of Welsh history was ultimately buried here in Conwy after his death in 1240, but his life was marked by domination of Welsh politics for decades, as he first rose to power as Prince of Gwynedd here in the northwest of Wales, but later expanded his influence far across the nation, directly controlling territories as far away as Powys and Shropshire, while also directing a number of client princes in regions stretching as far south as Llanetli. This striking statue of Llewellyn was erected in 1898, but the square it overlooks is interestingly a reminder of the impact of the English on Wales through the centuries. Lancaster Square, like most of the street and place names in Conwy, is an English name. The reason of course being that this town was originally born out of Edward I's conquest, and the houses and streets within the walls were mostly occupied by English soldiers, 
as this served as a garrison town that provided the king with a military presence far away from his court in London. The military garrison stationed here at Conwy was a vital tool for English monarchs for centuries even after Edward I's reign, as a number of Welsh rebellions and other conflicts threatened the English crown's control of this region, which we'll talk more about later on. However, here we find ourselves walking down Conwy's sloping high street, lined by yet more historic landmarks that include this eye-catching building, Plas Maur, or in English, the Great Hall. This famous Conwy landmark was originally built in the 16th century, and it's often regarded as one of the finest Elizabethan townhouses anywhere in Britain today, beautifully preserved both inside and out and which showcases the grandeur of mansions belonging to wealthy merchants of the age. By the time of the 16th century, Conwy here had begun to make its transition from garrison town to a centre of commerce, with a bustling harbour emerging on the River Conwy just outside the town walls at the bottom of this sloping street. As well as historic merchants' houses, the high street here is also home to a few more pubs of its own including the Old Mail Coach, one of the oldest taverns in Conway, which was the main stopping point for mail and stage coaches, making the lengthy journey across North Wales. In the last few centuries, ever more people have been making that trip, a phenomenon which has prompted the building of modern hotels in the heart of historic Conway to accommodate tourists. Hotels like the Castle Hotel just here, which as we see it today dates from 1885, but which can actually trace its history back more than 500 years, to when it was an inn known as the King's Head. The grandly rebuilt Victorian-era hotel is the town's most luxurious lodging, and one of the most splendid buildings on the high street here. But it stands directly opposite another relatively modern landmark too, the town's former Palace Cinema, which dates from 1935 and which, despite its comparative youth, fits in rather nicely with the surroundings of this historic town. As we mentioned, you'll find buildings from pretty much every one of the last seven centuries in Conwy, and just here, at the point where the High Street meets Castle Street, we find another remarkable historic building. This is Abba Conwy House, another impressive local merchant's house, which is especially notable for its age built around the year 1420, making it one of the oldest houses still standing in all of Wales. Having overlooked the streets of Conwy for more than 600 years now, Abba Conwy House is a symbol of the early years of the town's role as a centre of trade and commerce, originally built to serve as a combined house and warehouse for an English merchant one of many who came to this area of Wales to make a living in the centuries following the conquest. Now merchants' houses like Abba Conwy House provide an interesting insight into the aftermath of the English takeover of Wales, because English merchants who came to live on the streets of Conwy were typically engaging in trade with the Welsh, who for many centuries were actually forbidden from living within the town walls here. Conwy, having begun life as a stronghold of English power, remained an English-only zone for years, with the native Welsh restricted to living only on the exterior of the walls, engaging in often unequal trade with English merchants. But here, we can now make our way out of the walls via the Lower Gate, one of the three original gates built in the town walls, and which leads us out onto the quayside the area where so much of Conwy's trade has taken place over the centuries. This area, where Welsh and English traders once intermingled, just on the edge of the mighty walled town, is brimming with history and activity, today a popular place for tourists in the town to stroll alongside the river or have a sit-down, and possibly a drink from the Liverpool Arms pub here. This historic tavern, which dates from the 18th century, is a relic of the heyday of Conwy's port, said to take its name from one of its first owners, who originally worked as a captain of a small ship that travelled between the port here in Conwy and the port at Liverpool, just over 30 miles to the east of here. 
Built onto the western row of the town walls, the pub is one of a number of intriguing landmarks that you'll find here on the quayside. And a few feet further along this waterfront street, there stands one of the most unusual buildings in the whole of Britain. At the near end of this row of houses, you'll notice a small red painted building, which rather amazingly is the smallest house in all of Great Britain, measuring just 10 feet in height and 5 foot and 11 inches in width. Originally built simply to fill a gap between the row of white cottages and the stone tower in the town walls, this house is thought to be more than 400 years old, built in the 16th century to serve as a residence for local fishermen. Today though, nobody lives inside Britain's smallest house. In fact, its last resident was a fisherman by the name of Robert Jones, a man who was paradoxically more than six feet in height and whose home only had enough space for a bed, a fireplace and a coal bunker. Jones was eventually evicted by the local council in the year 1900, after they deemed the house unfit for human habitation. But today the building is still open to visitors to Conwy during the summer months, allowing you to take a look around its extremely snug interior, before then venturing out once again to the wide open scenery of the harbour here which runs along the west bank of the beautiful River Conwy. At this point of the river bank, we can see where the town walls jut out towards the water, providing an extra level of defence for the town in the case of any amphibious assault. While in its shadow today, we find a group of small boats littered on the shore here. As we've mentioned, Conwy's port was historically busy with fishing boats. The waters of the River Conwy, well known for their plentiful stocks of flounder, plaice, bass, eel, crabs and more. And for many years fish was one of the main exports from the port that existed here, alongside slate, mined from the mountainous landscape of the surrounding region. Now the River Conwy flows for a lengthy 34 miles from the Welsh heartlands, before emptying out into the Irish Sea, just a short distance further down in that direction. And while it was historically vital for trading purposes, the river was also a major obstacle for people travelling overland across the northern coast of Wales, an obstacle that King Edward I chose to exploit when he built his castle. The ominous spectre of the huge medieval castle lingers large over the quayside here, while the imposing town walls also serve as another reminder of how the English king sought to project his power so clearly over the Welsh. But as well as Conwy's historic cultural significance to the native peoples of this region, this area also provided a real strategic benefit to the English conquerors centuries ago. For the vast majority of its history, the town of Conwy could only be reached from the other side of the river by taking a ferry, the river therefore serving as a kind of extended moat for the castle and walled town that would stop any attacking force in its tracks. Today, however, the river is spanned by no less than three modern bridges. A large road bridge that we can see in the distance, a railway bridge behind it, and in between the two, the Telford Suspension Bridge which was built back in 1826 to a design by the famed engineer Thomas Telford, and which eliminated the obstacle of crossing the river by ferry for people travelling across North Wales. Of course, by the 19th century, the military significance of the castle had all but vanished, and Conwy here was first and foremost a port town, with this purpose-built quay built in the 1830s, and where you'll still see a good deal of maritime activity taking place. Just outside the town walls, there now stand a number of small quayside facilities. This small shed, for example, today used for restoring boats. In fact, when you're in Conwy, you can often take a trip out onto the water on one of a number of heritage sailings, which offer some even more spectacular views of the castle and walled town, as well as the river and estuary as it flows out to sea past the Great Orm of Llandidno. Besides tourist boats, you'll often also see boats out on the water that are collecting mussels. Conwy's mussels are often regarded as some of the very best that you can find in the country, and which you can sample for yourself here at the town's mussel purification facility. This building standing at the end of a row of equally intriguing houses. 
including the modern lifeboat station just next door, and then the old customs house, where all goods passing in and out of the town's harbour were historically checked and taxed. As you can see, the old customs house backs directly onto one of the 21 watchtowers of the historic town walls. While in the other direction, it looks out over the waters of the River Conwy and a small open square by the quay, on which we find a sculpture paying tribute to this town's historic muscle industry, muscle fishing having taken place here for hundreds of years. Now, while most mussel fishing today is to collect mussels for eating, historically, most mussel fishing was instead carried out to find pearls that are sometimes present inside the mollusks. And surprisingly, one pearl that was found here in a mussel at Conway is actually today part of the British royal family's priceless crown jewels. Passing by the old fairway boy here, this beautiful and riveting riverfront walk is home to yet another monument. This large anchor on the grass, placed here as a memorial to the heroic efforts of local fishermen aboard the trawler boat Kilravok, who in 1968 saved the lives of 400 American tourists whose boat had broken down off the coast and was being pushed dangerously close to the rocks of the Little Orm of Llandidno by strong winds. The whole rescue operation was watched by thousands of locals from the coast, making it one of the most recent episodes in Conway's lengthy and dramatic history. But as we now turn our attention away from the river, we find ourselves once again at the foot of one of the oldest landmarks in the town's history, the castle. As we know, this castle served as a great show of Edward I's power over Wales after his conquest but that also made it a major target for those who were seeking to bring down the English rulers. Despite looking in rather good condition, the castle has been attacked on a number of occasions through time, one of the most dramatic events coming in the year 1401, when Conwy Castle was actually captured by a force of Welsh rebels during the famous Welsh revolt led by the warrior prince Owain Glyndwr. Cleverly, the Welsh rebels were able to take the castle because they attacked while much of the English garrison here were worshipping inside St Mary's Church, which we passed by earlier. Now, ultimately, the Welsh didn't quite have the resources to keep hold of the castle for long, but they negotiated a deal with the English to pardon those that had launched the siege, and the symbolic capture of one of the most fearsome fortresses in all of Wales proved enough of a victory for the rebels. The capture of Conwy Castle served as one of the earliest acts of the Welsh Revolt. And just a couple of years later, stronger rebel forces were laying siege to castles all over the country, from Carnarvon to Aberystwyth and even Cardiff, during a feverish few years that saw the Welsh mount a major fight back against the English. However, despite support from the French army in the late 1400s and early 1410s, the Welsh Revolt ultimately fell apart. Owain Glyndwr disappeared in 1415, and the English firmly re-established control over the nation, coming down with an even harder rule than before on the Welsh people. Here, just in the shadow of the castle, meanwhile, there stands another important local landmark, Conwy's historic Guildhall. The centre of local government and the meeting place for the town council, the guildhall that stands today was built back in 1863, but it stands on the site of a much, much older medieval hall, which was likely built in the 13th century, around the same time as the castle and the walls, and which served as a centre of English government in this part of Wales. The River Conwy marked the border of what was once Gwynedd, but which after Edward I's conquest became the Principality of North Wales, directly ruled by the King, and where he intended not only to suppress independent Welsh culture, but also to impose the English legal system on the people, achieved by creating new courts and outposts of local government in settlements like Conway here. Now, the Guildhall stands at the top of Castle Street here, which of course takes its name as it runs across the walled town towards the castle. This street is lined by yet another varied array of historic buildings, from Victorian-era edifices, like the stone-built ones that we're passing by here, 
two much older medieval landmarks, which hold links to the town's very earliest days. The fetching white building that we can see here is known as the Old College, and it was likely built around the time of the 15th century, having undergone much restoration in the hundreds of years since. Its name is thought to link the building all the way back to the old Abba Conway Abbey, and it may stand on the site of the old monastic college, where monks would dedicate themselves to religious learning, just a stone's throw away from St Mary's Church, behind this row of buildings. Interestingly, although we've been crisscrossing back and forth across the walled town, Conwy is a very easy place to navigate on foot, its streets all following a fairly rigid grid pattern inside the square circuit of walls. Though more uncommon in Britain than elsewhere around the world, grid layouts were very much in vogue around the time of Edward I's reign, and he built a number of planned towns with this method all over his kingdom. But the grid street layout is all that remains of that era in the town centre, though Castle Street here is home to a number of slightly younger pubs, the large Georgian dragon dating from the mid-19th century, and the blue bell next door to it dating to 1935. Although, as you might be able to tell from its historic appearance, a tavern of the same name did stand on the site for many years beforehand. Of course, as we mentioned earlier, from the 18th century onwards, ever-growing numbers of people began travelling through Conwy on their journeys across North Wales. And this prompted the opening of a number of new hotels, taverns and coaching inns on the walled town streets. We've already seen a number of these. But just here we find what was once upon a time a merchant's hall that was later converted into a pub, that was known as the Black Lion Inn, opened in this building in the 18th century. As you might be able to tell though, the building is much more than 300 years old, originally built as a merchant's hall around the time of the 1440s, which would make it around 20 years younger than the more famous Abba Conwy House, which we can see here once again on Castle Street. As one of Wales's oldest houses of all, Abba Conwy House understandably grabs a lot of people's attention as they reach the end of Castle Street here. But surrounding it are a number of other fetching buildings too. The modern fish and chip shop that we can see here, having once upon a time existed as, you guessed it, yet another pub known as the Eagles Inn. Just next door to it is another popular gift shop for visitors to the town, and then on the corner of the street, just up from the Lower Gate and the Liverpool Arms pub, we find the rather large Library and Civic Hall, built rather recently in the 1960s, and which has in recent years been home to the town's only theatre. Given the beautifully preserved nature of Conwy's historic town walls, in the present day there isn't a whole lot of space for the town centre to grow with few, if any, new buildings being constructed within the confines of the walls, which are actually part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site, no less. Of course, the modern town, home to more than 5,000 people, has expanded beyond the walls. But as we can see here on Berry Street, there are still plenty of homes to be found inside the old fortifications. The town centre is only small, so the people living within Conwy's historic walls form quite an exclusive club. But what's interesting to note is that there's an even more exclusive club for those who were born inside the town walls, a club of jackdaws, which is the name given to people born within the confines of Conwy's medieval defences. Nowadays, few people are born within the walls, as the town's hospital is located outside. But historically, there were many more jackdaws in Conway, and these people get their name from the fact that the town has for centuries been closely associated with jackdaw birds, which historically nested in the stones of the old town walls. Here, we've made our way just outside the walls once again, where we can see the historic stones and crevices in which jackdaws would have made their nests. To this day, the jackdaw remains the symbol of Conway, but the walls here are also an unmistakable icon of this historic town. And as we can see from this northern row of the defences, they stand in almost perfect condition more than 700 years after they were first built. Few changes to the walls have been made since, although here we're walking through an opening in the walls that was created much later in history, 
simply to allow traffic to access the town centre more easily, as originally there were just three gates that you could use to enter the walled town. But having spoken so much about these historic medieval defences, it's about time we climbed up and had a closer look at them. A walk along the walls being yet another of the many treats of a visit to Conwy. Offering some truly spectacular views over the town centre, the river and towards the castle, it's well worth taking a walk up onto the walls. Much of the 0.8 mile circuit of fortifications open to explore. And on the way you could also get up close and personal with some of the grand defensive towers that dot the line of the walls. There are many walled towns and cities in Britain that are a delight to explore, but there are few places where you can really get a sense of just what it would have been like to live within and defend a mighty walled town like Conwy, the fully intact circuit of defences, always a noticeable presence wherever you are in the town centre. But as we look across the River Conwy, you might notice a group of hills, prominent landforms that once upon a time played host to another fearsome castle, which existed centuries before the construction of Conwy Castle on this side of the water. That castle was known as De Ganwy Castle, originally founded by the King of Gwynedd more than 1400 years ago in the 6th century and then rebuilt by the Normans in the late 11th century after their conquest of England. Located on the eastern side of the river, Deganwy was much more easily accessible to armies coming from England, and as such it was often a hotbed of fighting between the armies defending Gwynedd and the marauding English, a key stronghold for launching further attacks across the northwest of Wales. Recognising this strategic significance, Deganwy Castle was eventually destroyed by Llewellyn of Griffith, the Prince of Gwynedd, to prevent the English from using it as a base. As we know though, the English did still manage to conquer Gwynedd, and rather than rebuilding Deganwy, Edward I chose Conwy here, on the west bank of the river, for his new castle, making it harder to capture by any armies approaching from England. And as we know, that castle was genesis for the town of Conwy that exists today, and which looks absolutely resplendent in the evening sunlight, as we look down over the harbour from up on high. In this one image, we can see almost all of Conwy's history wrapped together in one stone-encircled package, from the imposing castle to the smallest house in Britain, and the collection of fishing boats dotted along the shoreline. Meanwhile, if we spin around, we can look out across the river, which has played such a vital role in this town's history, as a source of fish, a place of trade, and most significantly, an immense form of natural defence. While today, it's also the perfect place to end our walk, around this utterly enthralling town. As we turn around once again to take in what is undoubtedly one of the most beautiful views in all of Britain, I have to say a big diolch and vauriaun, or thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you've enjoyed seeing the sights and learning about the history of Conwy on our walk around the town, and I hope you're now looking forward to making your own trip to this fantastic Welsh town sometime soon.